Welcome back to the Junk Room, everybody. It's me, Santa Junk Man, here coming back with another video for you. Before we get started, I want to tell you about something very exciting. We're running a Star Wars poll where you can vote for your favorite Star Wars movie, your favorite prequel, your favorite series, your favorite TV show, a whole bunch of different questions, but I need you to go vote. That way we can get a good reputation of all the fans, what movie they like, what movie they hate, what movie they can't stand, all that. Go to the description below. Find the link to the poll, click it, or just head over to StarWarsJunk.net. The link's at the top of the page. You can't miss it. Now, on to the video. This is probably the saddest video we've ever done, because here are ten things, five and five, ten things that I wanted for Christmas as a child and never got. <laughs> still don't have a lot of them. Still don't have them today. My childhood was ruined because of these 10 things. Anyway, let's start off with, again, before I get, well, before I get started, these 10 aren't in any kind of order. Random 10, so 10 might not be as bad as 1. Never had them, so I don't know what I missed out on. But let's start at number 10. Now, I never asked for clothes for Christmas, or hardly ever. But this, was, well, I guess you can count this as clothes. This is something I really wanted. I was probably about 7, 8 at the time, somewhere around there. And I wanted some shoes, but I didn't want just any shoes. I wanted the Clark's Darth Vader tennis shoes that not only look cool as hell, they had Darth Vader's face on them, but they also had his face on the bottom of the shoe. So when you walk through the dirt on the playground, you left an imprint of Darth Vader's face. I wanted these shoes so bad, Mom. Why didn't you get these? I probably would, probably would have been able to talk to Amy Covey if I had these. She was too busy talking to Philip, who had the Mean Joe Green tennis shoes. So once again, I failed my chances trying to get the attention of Amy Covey. <sighs> it was a hard childhood. Never had these Darth Vader shoes, and it probably changed my life. Well, let's go to number nine. I'm a little older now, probably 14 to 16. And this is what I wanted so I could look cool. A boom box. You know what I'm talking about if you grew up in the 80s. A boom box. Now I know today you put these little earbuds in your ear, hook it to your phone, listen to some music, but back then we wanted a big ass boom box and the bigger the better. You put it up on your shoulder like this and you jam on some music. I mean you could play some rat, some warrant, all kinds of crazy, all kinds of music. Everybody would get your attention. You could even put on some Journey and get the attention of Amy Covey. Oh, we were in middle school by then. And I wasn't a jock, okay? I had to impress people some way, but didn't get this. But I did get a boombox, at least that's what I was told I got. I got, got something looking more like this one right here. How can I look how can I impress anybody with that? I had to show the world I had something big, loud, and powerful. Not small, tiny, and delicate. Really, could have changed my life if I had that. I'll be honest with you, I didn't listen to a whole lot of rock. I mean, sure, if there were people around, I might turn on some Def Leppard, but home in my bedroom, I was cranking on some Hank Jr., Bo Cephas himself. Few of you out there know what I'm talking about, and you southern boys do. Anyway, well, let's go on to number eight. Again, a little older, probably 15, 17, somewhere around there. Don't remember the exact date, but I sure wanted it. This was Castlevania II for the NES. Now, I can't blame my parents, or mostly my grandma, for not getting me this, because we went everywhere. Kmart, Zares, Keys, Wilson's, you name it, we went there looking for this. Castlevania II. Now, I had Castlevania I. I loved Castlevania I, although I wasn't really good at it, never could solve it. I think that Medusa was about as far as I could ever get with it until I got the Game Genie. Remember the Game Genie? Whew. Saved my life so many times, Game Genie. But I wanted Castlevania 2 so bad, everyone was sold out of it. So that Christmas, I didn't get a Castlevania 2. I got Time Lord. Don't get me wrong, I love playing Time Lord, but I wish I got Castlevania 2 got older, I never really, I still never really played Castlevania 2 because it brought back so, such bad memories of me never having it. 
But from what I understand from talking to some others, maybe I didn't really miss too much that Castlevania didn't really live up to the original. So let's go. I believe I'm on number seven. We're going to go back to the time when I was little again, somewhere between seven and nine, somewhere around there. Now, this wasn't here to impress anybody. This was just a toy to play with in my room. If I had this toy, my mom and dad wouldn't have seen me at least for six months. Now, I loved Hot Wheels. I had a lot. Well, actually, I didn't have a lot of Hot Wheels. My brother had a, a lot of Hot Wheels, and he was five years older, so he didn't play with his Hot Wheels, so I played with his Hot Wheels. But I did have a few. I remember taking the board from board games, making cool-ass ramps with it. But what would have been cooler than making my own ramps? A parking garage! I wanted this parking garage so bad. I mean, look at it. It's got gas pumps at the bottom of it. It's got an elevator up and down. It looks so fun. You could use it in storage. I told my mom, hey, look, you get me that. You won't be stepping on my damn Hot Wheels anymore. I can put them in this garage. It would have been awesome. It would have been so much damn fun. And I had Star Wars figures. I'm sure I would have found a way to have the Star Wars figures playing around in the parking deck also. Man, I wish I got that parking deck. Okay, okay. <sighs> Number six. This is one I would have had so much fun in the neighborhood playing with. A laser tag. Now, before I start bitching and crying too much, let me say I kind of did get a laser tag. My parents got me Phototon Tag. Even a stupid name. And sadly, everyone else in my neighborhood got laser tag. This was the coolest, hottest thing to have around 1985. So, all my friends got laser tag. I got photo tag. Photo font. I can't even say it. Photo fo, photon tag, I guess was the name of it. And guess what? It doesn't work with laser tag. All my friends were shooting at each other. Their laser tag chest thing beeping and blowing it up and all. They were hiding, hiding behind trees, hiding behind moving cars. They was doing all kinds of stuff. What was I doing? I was in my room sending up my little chest plate against the wall and shooting it from across the room because my laser gun didn't work with laser tag and my little chest plate didn't work with laser tag. How much fun was it with the play laser tag by yourself? <sighs> Talk about a real loser. I would look out my window and there they would all be. Playing laser tag, killing each other, shooting each other, lasering all over the place. One guy even had a helmet that came with his laser tag. What did I have? A cheap knockoff. Thanks, Mom. What are we up to? Number five. This is a toy I didn't even know I wanted. Now, I'll be honest with you. I didn't know this existed until a couple years ago. But I'm going to put this on the list anyway. But I think it proves I wasn't loved as a child. Or someone would have bought me this. Check this out, an indoor playset swing set. At the top, you have the base, and at the bottom, you have a speeder bike swing. Sure, it looks like it's going to topple over time you climb to the top of it or get a good swing on that speeder bike. But damn, I would break my neck to play in something like this. I'm not going to lie to you. If the neighbor had one of these today, I would climb my ass up in it and play. It looks awesome. So mom and dad, why didn't you get me this? I didn't know about it, so I didn't ask about it. But come on. You could have got it anyway. What are we up to? I believe we're at number four. Honestly, I forgot the numbering I'm doing, but let's say we're at number four. And this is another one I can't blame on my parents or anyone because we couldn't find it at the store. I had the Death Star. The Death Star. And I had a bunch of other Star Wars toys. Actually, again, my brother had most of the Star Wars toys, but he was growing out of them, and I was getting his toys, and I was getting my own. One thing I really wanted, and my brother wanted it also, was Darth Vader's Star Destroyer playset. It doesn't really look like a playset. doesn't really look like a Star Destroyer. doesn't even look like a ship. But man, I wanted this thing. You could even torture somebody, hang them upside down. And it had this little plastic thing that was supposed to be the hologram where you could act like the Emperor sending messages. I wanted that. I wanted, I wanted my Darth Vader to have a place to torture my action figures. But we looked everywhere for it. Again, service merchandise, Wilson, Zayers, Kmart, you name it. No one had this thing. Today, I still don't have it in my Star Wars collection. Maybe in 2019, I can finally get my wish. Now, growing up, I had racetracks. Me and my brother would play with racetracks. Me and my friend would play with racetracks. Racetracks were the things to get. Almost everybody got a racetrack growing up. But they were kind of boring. You know, you do the little clicker triggers, 
and they would go around the loop. They would always pop off the loop and fall down. They weren't worth having at all. But then, probably around the early 80s, I saw something amazing that, that changed my mind on what I thought about racetracks. No longer were they just this stupid piece of plastic that you laid on the floor that hardly ever worked. This racetrack was defying gravity because this racetrack went up the wall. That's right, a racetrack that went up the wall. Normally you have your regular, normally you have your regular figure eight or whatever tracks, but one part of the track slid up into the wall in a big curve. I thought it was the greatest thing ever. Never seen anything like this. Sure, today's kids probably got stuff like that that they can do with a drone. But for me, back then in the early 80s, the thought of having a racetrack that's also on your wall, that was just too much to comprehend. And I wanted this so bad. I asked everybody. I was asking strangers at the mall for it. I sat on Santa Claus's lap three times asking for this. Did I get it? Nope. Did I get a generic racetrack that was a piece of shit? Nope, I didn't even get that. But I did have plenty of shares of normal on the floor racetracks. So I can't complain too much, although racetracks were only fun for maybe the first 20 to 30 minutes. And then my brother would dare me to put my tongue on the track while I hit the trigger to the gun. And then it would end up with me crying and my brother sent to his room. Man, good times. What are we up to? Number one, again, this isn't in real order. So if you're waiting for some big number one reveal, sorry, but this is just number one and it's a random number one. And this is a watch. I wanted to be styling. When I went back to school after this Christmas break, I wanted everyone to know I was the man. Now I already had a calculator watch a year before and it got me a pretty good attention. And earlier that year for my birthday, I got a Pac-Man watch. And it was a huge hit. I got all kinds of attention with that. Not just from the other guys in the classroom, but even Amy Covey loved that watch. I would let her play with it during recess. In fact, don't tell anyone this. I wasn't allowed to, but I let Amy take it home one time and play with it over the weekend. Finally, thought I was getting my shot at Amy Covey. Hmm. So what? So I took it to the next level. What can be a Pac-Man watch? And I know what you're thinking. A Frogger watch would take it to the next level. No, she already played video games. I had to outdo that. So I asked my parents for the robot watch. No, not a Transformer watch, although it looks kind of like a Transformer. This was just a generic robot. I wanted it on my wrist so bad. Again, another item I didn't get, so it kind of changed things. When I went back to school with my same old Pac-Man watch that everyone was kind of tired of, there was Amy talking to Philip with his new Cubert watch. Pac-Man was old news. Had no robot to impress her with, so what was left? She didn't care about my Pac-Man watch. She wanted to see Cubert. Couldn't blame her. Even I had to ask Philip if I could play his Cubert watch at least once. But I never got the robot watch. However, my friend Boyd did get the robot watch for Christmas, which kind of was like putting salt in the wound. Although, he did kind of get made fun of and even beat up on the playground. I'm not really sure if he got beat up because he had a robot watch, or maybe it was because he wore a punky Brewster shirt to school. So maybe he saved me a lot of hassle not having this robot watch. Maybe that was a little too nerdy. Anyway, that's 10 things I never got for Christmas. I want to thank you for watching. If you want to support this channel, then maybe I can get some of this stuff I never got. Head over to Patreon.com. Link's in the description below. Or just go to Patreon.com slash Star Wars Junk. And if you want to support me and get some cool t-shirts like this kind of shirt, head over to StarWarsJunk.net. I want to thank you for watching. Please subscribe. Hit thumbs up, and I'll be back very soon with another video. Thank you, sir, for that unsolicited testimony.